Hopefully our residents stay safe out there during this uh, horrible storm. Um, but we will uh, commence our, um, our TAMZ Board of Directors meeting and we'll start with the quorum check. Uh, we, uh, do a roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay. Uh, District 1, Supervisor Alejo. Here. District 2, Supervisor Phillips. District 3, Supervisor Lopez. Here. District 4, Supervisor Askew. I'm here. District yeah. 5, Supervisor Adams. Colleen Courtney here for Supervisor Adams. She'll be joining uh, in a couple of minutes, I believe. Okay, thank you. Uh, City of Carmel by the Sea. Yeah. City of Delray Oaks. Good morning, I'm here. Yeah. City of Gonzales. Cool, well, we'll stay in, in touch on here. that. It'll be interesting. City of Greenfield. All right, will you take care? Uh, be safe driving with all this, all this weather. City Everybody King mute. City. Present. Okay. All right. Take care. Talk to you later. City Please. of Marina. Bye -bye. City of Monterey. Present. City of Pacific Grove. Here. City of Salinas. <laughs> City of San City. Hang with me one second. City of Salinas. Here. City of San City. City of Seaside. Here. City of Soledad. Here. Ambag. Here. Caltrans District 5. Here. Monterey Bay Air Resource District. Monterey Regional Airport District. Here with you. Monterey Salinas Transit. Here. City of Watsonville. CSUMB. Good morning. Chair, we do have a quorum. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and um, um, Debbie, if we can make sure we call the city of Watsonville. I know they had some council uh, changes, but they haven't attended in a few months. I wanna make sure they uh, make sure they appoint their designated uh, person to join TAMZ. Uh, but uh, Debbie, if you could also help me, I know we have a few uh, new council members that uh, returned or are joining TAMZ for the first time. I want to, first of all, welcome Salinas Mayor Kimberly Craig coming back into TAMZ. I think uh, Pacific Grove uh, Council Member Chas Pidori, oh, did I got the city right? And then uh, what, I think there's a couple other council members. Mayor Gonzalez, if you could help me, Debbie, out. Oh yeah, Mayor Gonzalez, um, uh, Jose Rios, there he is waving. All right. And then, Welcome. of course, we have our, our new county supervisor, Wendy Root, ask you. Oh, yes, Wendy, of course. <laughs> I know she's she's a, an old friend to you, of course, yeah, yeah, now, and you've had so many meetings. Family, you know, so, okay, great. And then unless our Marina person showed up, um, uh, we have a new representative for Marina. All right. So Christina uh, Dirksen. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, uh, we, we, we will love your participation on TAMSI and serving uh, in, in this capacity on transportation. We're going to go to um, the public comments. Anything? Oh, actually, let's go to the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could put the flag up on the screen, you put hand hand over your heart and then join me in the pledge. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Now let's go to uh, public comments for anything not on today's agenda. Uh, the public, if you could raise your hand on the uh, button, I'd be on the, I think it's on the participants button. On the bottom of the screen, we would uh, recognize you to speak on any comments not on today's agenda. I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, let's move on to our consent agenda, item number three. Um, if any um, board members would like to uh, speak or pull any consent items. Okay, if not, let's go to the public. The public like to uh, speak or uh, pull any items for the consent agenda. Okay, um, if not, if you have a motion and second, if you could state your motion. Ask you and will move that. approval. Second. Oh, uh, Supervisor, Director Askew moves approval, a second by. Second, this is Allison Kerr. So, uh, second by Allison Kerr. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, let's go to um, 
Let's go to do roll call. Thank you. District 1, Supervisor Alejo. Aye. District 2, Supervisor Phillips. Aye. District 3, Supervisor Lopez. Aye. District 4, Supervisor Askew. Aye. District 5, uh, Alternate Courtney. Aye. Carmel by the Sea. Aye. City of Delray Oaks. Aye. City of Gonzales. Uh, City of Gonzales. City of Greenfield. Aye. City of King City. Aye. City of Marina. City of Monterey. Aye. City of Pacific Grove. Aye. City of Salinas. Yes. City of Sand City. City of Seaside. Aye. City of Soledad. Aye. Uh, Chair, the motion passes on a Unanimous vote. Uh, yeah, it's a 14 All right. with three absent. Thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. And you teed us up very nicely for this next um, item on our agenda. This is to present our transportation agency employee of the quarter to um, none other than our Eloise Rodriguez and also Maria Montia. Um, we'll pass it to Debbie. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, the employees of a transportation agency have selected Eloise Rodriguez and Maria Montiel as our employees of the quarter. Um, congratulations to you both. Uh, you um, have probably have interactions with these particular uh, staff members more often than anyone except perhaps myself. Uh, Maria is responsible for making sure you all turn your Form 700s in. So for those of you who are new, you'll uh, be giving her copies of your entering office Form 700s. Uh, she uh, 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 is uh, responsible for taking notes at the Bike and Pedestrian Committee and uh, I believe uh, works with Christina on the notes for the Rail Policy Committee. And we're going to be using her in a new way as we uh, organize our electronic files, which are increasingly um, in demand, but are also um, a vestige of, I believe, in 2002. And so uh, they, are, they need a, a refresher. So with that, I'd just like to have you join me in thanking Maria for her excellent service for TMC. All right, she's in the gray there. Thanks so much, Maria. Um, Eloise Rodriguez, uh, you'll hear a little bit more about her later in the meeting, but I do want to say she's responsible, first of all, for managing my calendar, which for which I'm eternally grateful. Sometimes I'll give it one try, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I have a pretty busy schedule and um, she does an excellent job um, of making sure that I get a chance to meet with all of you, meet with all of our partners and uh, do general check-ins with your city managers and such. Um, she's also been a member of our COVID-19 task force and um, so helped to set up the office with the appropriate um, protective equipment and uh, six foot markings and um, lights in, in the bathrooms and relocating of our mailboxes and such so that when people do go in, it's a much safer environment. Um, and uh, she's really been here for, since TMC was um, started. So Eloise, thank you so much for everything that you do for TAMC. You're welcome. All right, Eloise, uh, thank you very much. Congratulations to you both, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. Eloise, really thank you for all the many different uh, duties and responsibilities that you help TAMC be a, a, a great and strong agency as it is um, because of uh, dedicated employees like uh, you. So thank you very mm -hmm. much for that. Thank you. Okay, uh, talking about awards, we got more awards coming. We're, uh, we're going to present the uh, next item, an item number five, uh, present the 2020 Transportation Excellent Awards. And Teresa, you, are you going to make this presentation? I am. Thank you. And good morning to everyone. So we are presenting our 2020 Transportation Excellence Awards. And as we get started, just a note that in the age of COVID, 
we have to transition back and forth between my presentation and then the recipient. So there'll be a, a slight lag as we do that. So with that, let me uh, share my screen and we'll get the ceremony started. All right, so again, as I said, um, each year we present this award and I'm happy to say that despite the fact of COVID last year, there was some good news regarding transportation. So this morning I'm going to present three awards. Two of them are for projects and then one of them is a special recognition award. So with that, uh, the first award this morning goes to the city of Monterey for their adaptive traffic signal project. This is a project that they did with uh, two of their partners, Bear Electrical and Western Systems. As all of you are familiar, Monterey is really a unique community. They have uh, 28,000 residents. They have another 20,000 people who commute uh, to the city each day. And then they have the tourists that come. And pre-pandemic era, they have more than 4 million tourists that will uh, arrive in that city each year. So as a result, it's not surprising that there's a lot of congestion along their, their corridors. Um, this is a look at Lighthouse Avenue. And if you recall a couple of years ago, we awarded them uh, a Transportation Excellence Awards for this particular project where they signalized all of the lights on Lighthouse Avenue. If you look there, you'll notice that they're all green, they're in synchronization. And so the city took a look at that and its success and said, well, okay, wait a minute. We've got it going here on Lighthouse Avenue and Del Monte Avenue. So let's expand this and let's make this a citywide project. And so on this slide here, you will see what they're doing. Um, you, the green lines show you currently what's running on this adaptive system that they've adopted. And then the red lines show you what they have in progress or what's prepared for the future. So let me tell you a little bit about the system that um, they've devised. It's, it's using vehicle detection and artificial intelligence software to respond accurately and immediately to real time traffic conditions. And by managing this project in house, the city was able to upgrade their equipment, install a new fiber optic lines and set up the system software and equipment more efficiently and effectively using, than using outside con contractors resulting in an estimated cost savings of over $70,000. Here's an example of how it works. If you look at Casanova and Fremont Street, it shows uh, through this system, um, the number of cars, the tracking vehicles that are waiting at their intersection. And then this next slide shows you how the corridor fits together. So you can see those different intersections, Washington, Figueroa, going all the way to Sloat. And it shows you just how this system works closely together. And then this slide, is an actual screenshot uh, of the system in action. So that's kind of what it looks like, tracking all of the vehicles that are going through an intersection. As a result, um, this system is more efficient using the existing roadway system, including less traffic congestion, reduced travel time, and safer roads for city residents and more than the 4 million visitors who come each year. So other benefits include uh, increases in quality of life, enhanced economics, safety and fewer air pollutants from idling vehicles. And it is for all of these reasons that we are honoring the city of Monterey, Bear Electrical and Western Systems today with a Transportation Excellence Award. I'm going to stop sharing the screen at this point and I believe Andrea Rennie is on the call today. And Andrea, would you like to say anything in regards to this? Yes, please. And thank you for a wonderful presentation. So the adaptive system has been an interesting and challenging project. So it is partially funded through Measure X dollars. And for every dollar of Measure X, we're able to get $5 in grant funding. So we were able to really stretch our Measure X dollars in this project. And also by doing all the managing in-house of the project of the installation and procurement, we were able to save um, about 700 to a million dollars on the project. So we're really stretching those Measure X dollars. 
So on behalf of all of our team, I wanna thank you for this recognition. I also wanna thank TAMSI for your support. I wanna thank the Monterey Bay Air Resources District for their support, especially Alan Romero and Richard Stedman. They uh, strongly support adaptive in a region, which is really important. And I'd like to also recognize our team members. So Robert, James, and Brent from Bayer Electrical Solutions, and Jason Spencer, who is representing Western Systems. They make this, I wouldn't say easy, they make it easier because they're just such a wonderful team. So thank you very much. I appreciate this. Thank you, Andrea. All right. Uh, let me hear from I'm sorry, Chair. I just want to say congratulations. I don't know if uh, uh, Director Smith would like to say a word uh, for the city of Monterey. Yeah, uh, not much I can add. Thank you, Andrea, and uh, greetings to John as well. Um, Andrea has done a fabulous job leading this project and many others, and uh, the quality of life and the return of our residents feeling that they, uh, they actually can um, navigate around the busy times has, has really brought us a, a level of uh, a quality that is just hard to describe. So thank you all for your work, uh, Andrea and team. It's It's been a fam fantastic result and we look forward to even more as we continue going out throughout the rest of the city. But thank you. Great work, everyone. Back to Teresa. Okay, next one. All right, the next project is Gloria Road, Iverson Johnson Canyon Road. This was a partnership between the County of Monterey, RMA Public Works Department, the City of Gonzales, the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority, Granite Construction, and Harris and Associates. And so we're recognizing them today for this project. But really, this recognition is more for their unique partnership. So let me give you a sense of the scope of, of the project. This you can see from this graphic how extensive it was and the number of roads that were involved in here. This is a $7 million project. And this gives you a sense of the road condition. This is Gloria Road, what it looked like before the project was complete. This is Johnson Road that gives you an idea of what that looked like. And then working together, this team, this multi-agency team raised project funds, which included funding from Measure X, our local measure, Senate Bill 1 funds, as well as funding from the county, the city, and the Solid Waste Authority. So um, we have a video clip, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I want you to get a real sense of the scope of this project and the transformation that happened. So I'm going to stop sharing. Mike is going to roll the video, and then I'll explain a little bit more about it to you. Okay, so by working together, this multi-agency team oversaw the design, the bidding, and the reconstruction of five miles of pavement along this critical access route to the regional landfill. Due to the close coordination among the partners, this project was completed ahead of schedule and under budget. And if you think about last year, there were a lot of challenges, right? COVID, we're still dealing with that. Um, they had challenges due to the summer heat wave. And then of course there was smoke from the Dolan fire, but despite all of that, this team persevered and um, they even ran into challenges with just trying to acquire construction equipment. But despite all of that, this team worked diligently together. They came in under budget and early. And so for those reasons, and you can see the beauty of what this road looks like now, right? Um, it's, there's so many roads that we want to be able to look as good as this. And so for those reasons today, um, Mike, you can stop sharing. For those reasons today, we want to recognize this project team and we wanna thank them. And again, really, 
This is more than just about that, those roads being constructed. It's about the partnership, them coming together to make sure that this would happen. And they all played a significant role in that. And so for that reason, um, I believe that I saw Enrique and I saw um, Billy on the line. I'm not sure who's speaking on behalf of the county, but I'm gonna stop talking and let one of them uh, take the mic at this point. Yes, good morning. Um, this is Billy Issa. Um, well, was, I was one of the engineers on the project and I have here in the room with me Enrique Saavedra and Jonathan Pasqua. Uh, we want to thank you very much for this uh, award. We're very humbled. Uh, this is great news for us as engineers. Bunch of nerds over here. We're proud of that. Um, this is, uh, it was very challenging this project because as we know the pandemic and, and then the fire. Um, I guess one key word that sums this whole project, it was a great team effort. We couldn't do it on our own. Um, we were very happy that the city Gonzalez was helping, uh, Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority, uh, the public, the farmers, everyone that got involved, including the uh, Harrison Associate, the designer, and not to mention also Granite Construction as the contractor. Um, the project was uh, kind of a little challenging, but uh, we used uh, the, uh, the full depth reclamation um, scenario on this project as well, where we used the existing material uh, rather than hauling it away and then bring materials back um, approximately 15 to 18 inches deep. And that was our base material, uh, mixed it with some cement, and then, then we paved the road uh, six inches with some fabrics in between. Uh, it came out really good, um, under budget. Um, we were like about a month uh, ahead of time. Um, the public were very happy, specifically the Salinas Solid Waste Authority have been waiting for quite some time. We were very pleased with the outcome. We couldn't be happier. Um, we, what we did this year is we had three projects uh, in total similar to what we've done. And we put them out to bid at the same time. And because of the pandemic, we got really good, I guess, bid back. So we saved approximately $2 million on this project. And we were still under budget. In the three projects. Yeah, and the, the three project itself. And so we were, again, we were very pleased of the outcome. And we we're really looking forward to do more projects like this, very successful. And we couldn't thank you very much for this wonderful award. Okay, all right. Um, Congratulations on that. Him? Excellent partnership there, thank you. Yes. Any questions? Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, we'll go on to the next award then. There were lots of hand claps up for you, high fives. So let me start my screen again. Uh, there's, um, <clears throat> sorry Teresa, there are some hands raised um, also for this item. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, we could start with, uh, let's see, Mayor Labar. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to say I drive this road from my work quite a bit. Uh, the video does not do it justice of how bad it was. This was an undrivable road. The semi trucks would literally go one to two miles an hour over some of those stretches. And when I, they started finishing this work, the improvement is just amazing and it extends all the way out to what the farmers are gonna be feeling too, the ability for their trucks to move in a better manner. This was an awesome project and I didn't realize the partnerships that were involved. Great job, everyone. Great, thank you for those comments. So go to uh, Council Member Robert Cullen. Yeah, good morning, um, Chair, and, and thank you for allowing me to speak for a minute. My name is Rob Cullen. I'm on the City Council for King City. I've been on the board of directors for the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority since 2008. Um, most recently served the past two years as board president and just handed, handed over the reins to Supervisor Lopez, who is the, the current board president for the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority. I just wanted to say a couple of things. One is I first got on the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority board, as I mentioned in 2008. And I remember doing my orientation and being driven around by general manager, Patrick Matthews. And as we got to the Gloria Iverson Road area saying, all right, Rob, watch out, uh, your butt's gonna hurt. And I remember hitting that road and all the bumps and him trying to, trying to navigate going back and forth. 
that was 12 years ago, a little more than 12 years ago. We have lived with that road in that condition for way too long. And it's something that at the, at the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority Board, been a topic of discussion for a long time. Greatly, greatly appreciate the partnership. Boy, look guys, let, there's a bunch of elected officials on this call. We had multiple organizations bureaucratic organizations get involved and do a project that was under budget and on time. That is amazing. We, we all need to give ourselves a pat on the back and each other a pat on the back. Just a phenomenal example of a, a partnership. And I just want to give a sincere thank you to TMC, all of the board members and staff for recognizing all of the, the jurisdictions that were involved in this project to make it happen. So. Thank you again, and, and I appreciate it. Thank you, council member, for joining us and for sharing those uh, awesome words um, of, of praise for this project. Thank you. Let's go to uh, um, Supervisor Lopez. So I'm actually on site here at the road. I want to just thank <laughs> everybody who had a part in getting this done. Um, you know, for me, looking at this particular road and understanding what it meant to our community can't be understated. I remember coming out here as a staff member for Supervisor Salinas, who helped kick off this process years ago. And the person in front of me, I was actually filming the road with a camera in my car. They swerved off the road, preferring to use the dirt road on the side of our county road instead of our <laughs> pavement. And so having this project complete is a huge, huge undertaking. And I wanna congratulate all the partners, thank all the partners for making this happen. But more importantly, I wanna acknowledge that the Solid Waste Authority also has created a budget set aside yeah, moving please. forward to partner in more projects like this moving forward. I think that's incredibly important. And I think one partner that was left off the list that I wanna make sure that we thank is Jackson Family Wines. They dedicated some land at the turn to make it safer for the community. And so I wanna make sure that they get some recognition for that contribution and partnership as well. But uh, thank you all for the opportunity and thank you, Mr. Chair. Congratulations and reporting live for KSBW, Chris Lopez. Thank you for that live report. Um, awesome. But let's go to uh, Supervisor Phillips. Also, yeah, I just uh, since I serve uh, along with Chris on the uh, on the Slings Valley Board, uh, it, it was a great project and a great partnership, and uh, and we had to support it, or uh, Chris Lopez would have had a contract out on on all, all of us. But it really was, uh, and that's the way we should be doing uh, some of our big road improvements is partnerships with the various entities. So thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Anyone else? Well, congrats uh, on that on this great project. Uh, let's go to the next awardee, Teresa. Okay, uh, let me get it up. All right, so this is a special award of recognition that we're really pleased to present today, and it's for Monterey Salinas Transit. So while challenged with declining ridership and revenues last year because of the pandemic, like just about everybody else being affected by it, Monterey Salinas Transit has maintained their commitment to service and excellence. And under the leadership of General Manager and CEO Carl Sador and the MST Board of Directors, the agencies by their actions demonstrated leadership and what community service is during multiple local crises, as well as the global pandemic when they heeded the call to meet the unprecedented challenges of 2020. So let me tell you a little bit about what they did. While the ridership was down and fewer routes are in action, MST redirected and utilized their available workforce and resources to support the community needs at a time and at the same time avoid driver cutbacks. They mount shelter in place with fare free options and led the charge in PEE and COVID safe protocols and safety. So here you see them that the crews are disinfecting their entire fleet and they did it each night with hospital grade germicide and uh, added midday cleaning as well as their resources were available. Um, this is another example of them putting safety uh, protocols in effect, providing personal protective equipment to their employees 
including latex and disposable gloves, disinfectant wipes, and hand sanitizers and face masks. And then they also instituted policies for the public as well. You can see this is an example. They had this kind of signage that you see on the left, both in English and Spanish. And you will notice the markings on the ground to the photo on the right, reminding people to socially distance that's six feet apart, and just to ensure that all of those safety protocols were in place. Hand sanitizers were provided for passengers as they boarded each of their buses. And then once they were on board, these reminders were also in place, reinforcing again the importance of the safety protocols. Last year, they donated two mini buses to a medical clinic to expand their ability to provide resources and medical services to essential agricultural workers, including the ability to conduct COVID field testing right there in the field for those workers. And they provided um, Wi-Fi hotspots for students. Um, and this again was the whole thing about connecting services and opportunity and providing a way to keep their workforce employed. Um, so this just made sense not only for uh, MST, but all for, for those who served and um, they serve. And I wanted to provide a quote here. This is something that Carl said when this came up regarding providing the Wi-Fi hotspots. Quote, the decision to use MST resources to support students and help our neighbors in Greenfield to bridge the digital divide between the urban and rural areas was simple. MST is in this to win this together with our community. And during this crisis, we will deploy our resources where they can achieve the most community benefit. And last year, um, as we've mentioned before, there was the Dolan fire and MST was also affected by that. They were under the threat of evacuation of their own headquarters and yet, during all of that, they rescued and relocated seniors who were in need of transportation to safe shelter during that fire. And so these are some of the, the citizens that they were able to rescue and provide safe transportation to. And their employees working together with the Salvation Army and Mills on Wheels, their COVID 19 Community Support Task Force, which is a team of seven employee volunteers, delivered 51 meals to seniors and continued this effort every day for as long as volunteers were able to do so, demonstrating again their leadership and what Good Neighbor is all about. They provided telewellness support, uh, checking in on local seniors. Their marketing team developed these thinking of you cards and gave them to the Alliance on Aging, which then distributed these cards to residents at skilled nursing home facilities in Monterey County. And as an organization, their employees had an internal fundraising drive to help support hospitality workers, again, demonstrating their heart and being in touch with who we are as a community in Monterey County. And this is just an, another example of them providing masks to the Center for Community Advocacy. And on election day, November 3rd, MST passengers could ride free so that their lack of transportation would not prevent them from being able to exercise their right to vote. And on December 1st, passengers could also ride free in honor of Rosa Parks' birthday and recognition that she changed the course of history when she refused to give up her seat to a white passenger on a city bus in Montgomery, Alabama on December 1st, 1955. Her brave decision led to the Mon Montgomery bus boycott and ultimately the US Supreme Court ruling that public transportation bus segregation was unconstitutional. Now, despite all of this, MST did not lose sight of what their mission was, which is to provide essential transportation services. And so they made some significant changes and advancements last year. This is one of them. It is the contactless fare system. It is part of Caltrans California Integrated Travel Project and MST was the only transit system in California selected to demonstrate this contactless fare payment system. And one more thing that they did last year is they celebrated the groundbreaking 
of their Measure X and SB1 funded South County Operations and Maintenance Center, which will support existing and future transit needs in South County and bring approximately 190 well-paying local jobs to the area through direct and indirect activities, advancing transit equity in Monterey County. And it is that commitment to innovation and resiliency that earned MST a 2020 Transit Innovation and Resiliency Award from the California Transit Association Small Operators Committee. When they got that award, Carl's response was, continuing to provide essential transportation services while contributing to the recovery of the whole community is what MST has been focused on. And so for all of those reasons, we are here to recognize Monterey Salinas Transit with this special award of recognition. We believe that their leadership and service is truly commendable and deserves recognition for they have gone the extra mile and clearly demonstrated that they are driving the heart of Monterey County and have earned this award today. And with that, I'm going to end with stop sharing my screen and uh, Chair, would you like to say anything yeah, before we- for sure. I'll um, we'll ask you to Carl to say some words. Um, it really, this is one of those examples of even during hard times, uh, we had fires, we had the pandemic going on. Uh, MST really stepped up as a community leader to help in a lot of different ways uh, from helping our youth uh, dealing with the digital divide and not having access in places like Greenfield to saving those seniors that were uh, shown in the photo and then just protecting their employees, their employees stepping up and really um, trying to offer to help in a lot of different ways uh, from rescuing those um, um, seniors, but also um, getting, um, making it easy for people to get out and vote on election day. That was very commendable um, of them. And certainly uh, for the community, really um, seeing a day honoring civil rights and Rosa Parks legacy that our transit agency is celebrating that with a free fare for our local residents. For me, that was just another, uh, it was another example and another um, to really be proud of, of this transit agency. So I've been proud to sit on their MST board of directors. They also put out a really nice, um, it looks like a laptop uh, report, um, but it gives all the highlights of all the work they did, but a great re annual report to the community about their accomplishments and their protection of residents on their buses, but also their dedicated employees. We got to keep them safe and keep those buses going uh, for those that depend on public transit. So I really want to thank you, Carl. Carl was the president of the California Transit Association last year. So he served on a statewide leadership basis. Um, so um, in many different ways, um, he's, uh, he has been a great leader, but also the agency has been a great leader uh, across our nation. So with that, Carl, thank you for your leadership and we'll pass it to you to say some words. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, wow, listening to all that makes me understand why I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, your leadership on our board as well as the rest of the MST board members. We have some uh, uh, on this uh, committee as well, including Mike Labar, who I can see. These are the folks I can see. Um, however, uh, uh, I'd like to thank them for trusting uh, our management team. I'd really like to thank our ATU uh, local 1225 leadership and, and their members um, who we could not have done this uh, without their uh, willing support to help the community and um, just the uh, working in this community, everyone banding together um, and, 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 and pulling together through this has been so helpful and, and very fulfilling. So I just really like to thank uh, all those who, who helped us help the community. So thank you very much. Uh, we, can, we, can, uh, we can do this. Thank you. You have a few folks who uh, want to say a few more words. Let's go to uh, Mayor Labar. Another. You, uh, I just I just want to congratulate the MST family. Um, your success is because you treat us all as family, and I think that's the heart of public transit. So great job. Uh, okay, thank you, Mayor. Let's go to uh, Debbie, and then we'll go to Allison Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, one of the um, 
benefits, I should say, or silver linings of COVID is that I've actually been able to go to most of the MST board meetings. And um, it's always useful for me to get a sense as to uh, how Carl deals with his board. He's got an excellent process where they do an annual strategic planning um, activity every year. Um, when, and, and I've just been able to learn so much from him that I, I really appreciate it. Um, he didn't even mention something that I think is quite groundbreaking, which is that he had a subset of his team to take um, COVID tracing um, uh, training. And so, you know, they didn't want to wait for the county to help them out. They developed their own expertise. And I just uh, am continually amazed at all the innovation that uh, he leads and that his team uh, is inspired to carry out. So um, great job, Carl, uh, Lisa, and the whole team. Thank you, Debbie, for those words. Uh, let's go to uh, Mayor uh, Kerr. Thanks. Um, I just want to say congratulations on the recognition, Carl. Um, it's amazing the amount of uh, programs you were able to do. And thank you for your compassionate leadership um, driving these thoughtful community oriented policies. Um, and I'm proud to say uh, Carl lives in Delray Oaks. Right on. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? Uh, thank you for those words, Mayor. And um, also, uh, Carl, thank you for also, uh, as an agency, uh, reaching out to all parts of the county and doing that groundbreaking in King City, a commitment to all, all corners of Monterey County and, and its people. So uh, applause for, for just being thoughtful in terms of your planning and where you extend services to. Um, thank you. Uh, if not, let's go, if there's no other comments, uh, well, let's do it. one last round of applause for the three awardees. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, Let's move on to our next uh, agenda. Uh, Chair, excuse me, Chair, we have a couple, two more to do. Oh, okay, sorry. That's okay. Let me uh, share my screen again. Jumping the gun here. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> um, and so we wanted, this is the part where we get to the internal TAMSI stuff. So let me um, show you the screen again. Oh, sorry, hang on. All right, so this is the internal part. Um, I'm actually going to turn this over to Debbie because we wanna recognize uh, Tamsi employee recognitions. And the special honoree today is Eloise Rodriguez who celebrates 20 years of service with Tamsi. So Debbie, I'll turn this over to you and then you can do the next award as well. As well. So <clears throat> there's only a few of you who have been around since Tamsi started, um, Mayor Potter. And, um, and one of them is Eloise Rodriguez. Um, Eloise uh, celebrated her 20 year anniversary last year. So um, that would have put it in, uh, in uh, two, 2000. I can't even say it, it's uh, so long ago. We've gotten out of the habit of that. Um, Eloise remembers um, and, and was there to help with the transition of our agency for when we were part of a county public works department and our director was uh, the county public works director, Gerald Gromko. Um, at the time, our deputy director was Dieta Nicely um, and uh, she uh, kind of ran the office, but when it came to you know, uh, managing board meetings and such, we were still a department of county public works. Um, shortly after that, in uh, 2001 or so, um, TAMSI officially became independent, and Eloise was there to help us make that transition. Um, she, uh, Eloise uh, was promoted from the position of the uh, junior to the senior administrative assistants, and then went through clerk of the board training and is now uh, our clerk of the board for TAMSI. Um, she's really uh, been an, an underlying force within the organization. Uh, you don't get to see it that much at the meeting, but um, the joke that Eloise and I have is that I'll uh, ask her to do something and she'll say, oh, it's, it's already done. And, and that's just Eloise all over, is that she thinks ahead and gets things done, um, uh, takes the initiative and just makes sure that things run smoothly. 
um, you know, all the way from our office COVID procedure to my schedule to the um, TAMC board meeting and the TAMC executive committee meeting. So Eloise, I just want to thank you for sticking with us. We really appreciate it. And um, we wouldn't be here without you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Eloise. I'd like to hear some words from you. Uh, two awards in one day. That's a great thing. But again, um, as chair, I can't thank you enough for your, for your dedication and, and all you do for Tamsi. But we'd love to hear some words from you. Uh, uh, 20 years, uh, it's a, a, a big uh, portion of your career with Tamsi. So we, we, we're very thankful for mm -hmm. your um, um, lifetime of dedication to this agency. Well, well thank you. Um, I really enjoy uh, serving the board and the agency. Um, I've served it over 20 years, as, as said, and I've seen a lot of different board members come and go and return. Um, and um, I just look forward to more years and uh, I enjoy, I enjoy what I do. Thank you, Eloise. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, we got one more, Teresa. Uh, yes, we do. Debbie, do you want to do the uh, chair recognition at this point? Uh, you're muted, muted, Debbie. I'm muted. All right. We are almost but not quite to the passing of the torch for the chair of the TMC board. And um, I just want to thank uh, Chair Luis Alejo for his service over the past year. Um, Supervisor Alejo has had a, had a tough year with the passing of his father early in the year. Um, and uh, have, we've got a, a whole new format going on here with COVID, transitioning the agency, transitioning all our committees, uh, uh, you know, transitioning our meetings and such. And, um, you know, those of you that have worked with him extensively know that he is, you know, super smart, super articulate, and knows how to move a meeting right along. And so it's really been a joy to work with him as chair. Um, he and I, uh, you know, we have our, our little texting back and forth. I hope you'll continue to send me articles uh, of interest. He always knows things ahead of time. You, those of you that know him know that about him and he'll find things out uh, ahead of time, make sure that we're paying attention to the headlines and um, is also super connected in the media, uh, you know, teaching us about different things that we hadn't even known about. Uh, so really thank um, your proactiveness in being a chair, um, your enthusiasm, and uh, you know, I'm sure the rest of the board appreciates the fact that you, you run a very well-organized meeting. So um, it's been great serving under you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Debbie, for those kind words. And I just wanna really thank all, all the staff. Um, those who have served as chair know that um, this staff, I think more than any other agency that I served on, really do a good job in preparing you. They make sure the meetings go well because they give you about one or two meet uh, meetings uh, to prep you even before the meeting begins. Um, so I really want to thank, thank them all for their professionalism. They made this job easy. And I uh, certainly want to thank um, Ed Smith that during this year that my father was sick, uh, he stepped in the first few months of uh, my chairmanship to run the meetings in person when I was uh, taking care of my father in Phoenix. So I really, that really meant a lot to me, Ed. So I really want to thank you for, for helping me out during this year. It's, it was a hard year, but to see um, our staff still work from home, uh, manage and, and uh, change up protocols so they could continue to deliver excellent service to the community for me, that was very commendable and it really shows the strength of, of this team and, and, and their commitment to transportation in our county. We got um, a bill signed that we got $20 million recently for the Castroville project. Among many accomplishments this year, it wouldn't have happened without Debbie's and, and all her great team to getting these things done. So for my hats off to you, and I just wanna say thank you for your, for your, your leadership. And uh, it was an honor serving as chair for this year. Thank you very much. If that's it, um, thank you for all the awardees and I thank you for staff for putting, that's always a, nice to put a highlight on folks who have um, done great work in transportation in our county. Uh, we'll, we will now move on to item number six. This is the election of officers. Uh, we're gonna just do a, a brief report on, from the nominating committee that um, it, that would included uh, myself as outgoing chair and representing the city. Of, um, it was Angela Wintalon, council member for the city of Greenfield. I wanna thank her for uh, joining me and um, 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 putting up some names for next year, this coming year's leadership. Uh, thank you, Angela. And I believe um, we recommended that uh, coming um, to step over and pass the gavel as chair would be Ed Smith, um, as first vice chair, uh, Mary Adams moving up. Uh, Mike Labar, um, mayor of uh, King City would uh, step up as second vice chair. And then serving on the board, I would continue as past chair, 
uh, as a county representative would be Supervisor Chris Lopez. And as a city representative, uh, Kimberly Craig got pulled back in to serve in that capacity, uh, representing the largest city on the Honoré Bay. Um, so with that, uh, we just I think uh, if there's discussion. We, we need a, a motion and a second, and then I could officially pass the, ga the virtual gavel to uh, Ed Smith here. Um, so any comment from anybody, and then we'll take some public comment before we vote on a motion. See no comments from. I see no comments from the board, but I see an iPhone that has no, maybe not. Um, um, go to, co comments from the public. See none. Okay, we'll go to uh, Director Smith. Yeah, I'm just going to um, you know wrap this up with comments uh, to say as we as we vote on this and and move forward with the, uh, the new year in 2021 with the new board. I'm glad you're still. Uh, you know, you'll be around as the, the past chair. That's great. I just wanted to say thank you. You've done an outstanding job. And uh, three things come to mind. Uh, spectacular hats that we uh, look forward to seeing. Um, and as Debbie has already mentioned, the speed of, of running the meeting. Uh, that's great. And your hats. And then also, um, you're always a clear communicator. And, uh, you know, especially those hats get in the way and they're always there. We look forward to seeing what hats there. So I'm very disappointed I don't see a hat today. But <laughs> the tie looks good. But uh, don't, don't expect a tie from me every, every meeting. I've kind of grown, uh, grown to not look forward to having to put a tie on. But those hats and you're, you're running your meeting, you've done an outstanding job, Chair. And Luis, uh, you had a spectacular year. When you look at the accomplishments um, with staff and Tamsie, it's been a phenomenal year under your leadership. So thank you, you've done a fabulous job. Thank you, sir, I really appreciate your kind words. Thank you. Um, if I see no further comments, if we could take a, a motion to approve that slate of uh, incoming officers uh, and board members. Supervisor, uh, I, I apologize, I'm jumping in. I had my hand raised oh, over there. Sorry, sorry. Uh, That's Mary. okay. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, it's an honor just to be nominated, um, but then also uh, I'm super excited to be back on TMZ and really appreciate the nomination to be on the exec committee. I have a huge passion for transportation, obviously with all the work that we're doing down at the train station, very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for mentioning that uh, the train station, uh, that's one of those issues that you really championed for a long time and we want to keep that project uh, moving forward. So. Uh, I know you're going to put your energy and enthusiasm to make sure that happens. Thank you. Okay. Um, do, do we have somebody make a motion? And I yeah, we'll move. make a motion. Okay, moved by uh, Director Askew, second by? Phillips. Okay, uh, by uh, Director Phillips. Um, uh, let's do a roll call vote. There's been a motion second. Roll call vote, please. District 1, Supervisor Alejo. Aye. District 2, Supervisor Phillips. Aye. District 3, Supervisor Lopez. Aye. District 4, Supervisor Askew. Aye. District 5, Alternate Courtney. Supervisor Adams is here now. Thank you. Aye. Oh, thank you. City of Carmel by the Sea. A city of Carmel by the Sea. City of Del Rey Oaks. Aye. City of Gonzales. City of Greenfield. Aye. City of King City. Aye. City of Marina. City of Monterey. Aye. City of Pacific Grove. Aye. City of Salinas. Marina, aye. Okay, Marina. City of Salinas. Aye. City of San City. City of Seaside. Aye. City of Soledad. Aye. Chair, the motion passes of 14 to zero. All right, uh, congratulations to everyone. And this is where I get to pass the virtual um, um, gavel to my friend, Ed Smith, a peaceful transition of power. So I'll, I'll pass it off to you, Ed, take over. Okay, Thank great. You Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Luis. Excellent job. 
Uh, so staff, it looks like our next uh, agenda item is number seven. Uh, Debbie, I think we'll, we'll look for uh, Christina for a presentation. Yes, good morning, Chair. Um, I'm Christina Watson, Principal Transportation Planner, and on the line with us today is Gus Corey, the agency's legislative advocate. He is going to be presenting an update on state legislative issues. I will present a brief update on federal legislative issues, and then we'll discuss the 2021 legislative program for your consideration to adopt today. Gus? Thank you, Christina. Uh, good morning, uh, board members. Gus Corey, President Corey Consulting. Uh, pleasure to be with you today. Congratulations to today's honorees. And I, I do also want to uh, thank and congratulate Supervisor Alejo for his service and just the incredibly productive year that we had last year. Um, just a couple highlights uh, to, to provide some context uh, before we launch into your draft uh, 2021 state and federal legislative programs. Uh, so uh, given uh, the November elections, the composition of the legislature has changed a little bit. Uh, Democrats now control 75% of both houses. There are 60 assembly members and 31 uh, senators uh, that are uh, Democrats. That's significant because uh, it is well over the two thirds vote threshold that's needed to put items such as a constitutional amendment on the ballot, uh, any contemplation of a tax uh, increase, uh, they have more than the requisite amount of votes to do uh, things of that nature. Um, one one uh, uh, Supervisor Leho had uh, referenced this, but in December, uh, the California Transportation Commission had awarded us with a $20 million grant award uh, for uh, SR-156 Castroville. Uh, that was on the back of us getting legislation signed. And again, uh, it was a difficult year uh, with COVID uh, when the legislature was meeting virtually they were cutting back on uh, a lot of bills. And so uh, Senator Monty was very instrumental in helping with that as well. And I just really want to ex express my appreciation to this body and staff for helping us get to the finish line on that. So what do we expect for 2021? Well, uh, the state budget is front and center for the legislature. Last June, when Governor Newsom had signed uh, the state budget, it was looking to paper over a $54.3 billion COVID-induced uh, recession deficit. And so a lot of good news has happened since then. Um, there was a record amount of capital gains, $17 billion uh, came into state coffers. And then uh, the elimination of some business uh, tax credits also helped uh, boost up uh, the amount of revenue that the state is receiving. And so uh, there's still $10 billion that the state is hoping to get from a fe federal stimulus package uh, to close the deficit, but we've come a long way in trying to solve that $54 billion problem uh, there. Uh, so what does it mean for transportation? Well, thankfully, transportation is not funded through the state general fund. Um, gas tax consumption is down um, with people telecommuting and the shelter in place order. Uh, so there's about a $1.5 billion shortfall in gas tax receipts through fiscal year 24-25. Uh, and uh, without any kind of corrective action, the state actually has about a $7.5 billion deficit for fiscal year 22-23, and it goes up to $11 billion in fiscal year 24-25. But um, there is some good news, and that's uh, we did receive some federal, well, we had not uh, received the check yet, but Congress did enact uh, legislation to provide us with some federal stimulus funding. So $2 billion uh, will go to transit agencies. This is on top of the money that we got last year from the CARES Act. And then there's $900 million that the state will receive that's discretionary, that should be sub allocated uh, to the regions. At least that's how it's uh, traditionally worked. So fingers crossed, we're hoping that the county gets some of those funds to be able to leverage our measure X dollars against um, to continue building um, and improving our infrastructure. Uh, there was also uh, $4.5 billion that was uh, in the governor's budget for economic stimulus, if you will. $1.5 billion of that goes towards investments into uh, zero emission infrastructure. So a billion for more charging stations up and down the state highway system um, and other places. And then half a billion dollars for incentives for uh, constituents to be able to purchase uh, electric vehicles. 
And um, this is another thing that I want to commend um, Supervisor Alejo on and Supervisor Lopez. Uh, we've had robust conversations about the need to uh, help drive down greenhouse gas emissions, uh, but that it has to be done in an equitable fashion. And the state the state funding uh, is really uh, reliant upon petroleum consumption. And most people have gas powered engines in the state. Um, half the cars in this state are worth less than $5,000. And so, um, you know, to really get people to make a dent, uh, there needs to be an incentive to get them to even consider the purchase of a new vehicle. But uh, the state's investments um, along the Central Coast in particular, I know Caltrans District 5 has been working really diligently uh, to um, put up some more charging stations in order to eliminate range anxiety and make it more of a viable choice uh, is something that we had advocated for last year. And the governor's office heard us loud and clear. And this is one thing that they um, had reached out to me to uh, ask me to extend their appreciation uh, to this body there. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to take advantage there. Um, so, the, you know, setting the table for our legislative platform, the, the major thing of interest here is the governor's climate action plan for transportation infrastructure. And this is based on his uh, successive executive orders, one that was released in uh, September of 2019, which said, we should look at existing resources um, to try to drive down greenhouse gas emissions, try to compel people to ditch cars and try to hop on a a bike, a bus, or a train were feasible. And then the, the latest executive order that was issued this past September was what I just referenced with respect to uh, getting more aggressive about investing more into zero emission uh, uh, vehicle infrastructure. And so the op there's opportunities, but there's challenges as well for us. We have a great partnership with uh, Caltrans and even the California State uh, Transportation Agency but we wanna make sure that given the constant drumbeat that's been voiced by this body, that um, there are a lot of underserved communities here and we wanna make sure that they don't get left behind, especially as we wean ourselves off of our uh, dependence on petroleum and consider other alternative funding sources that, um, that the access to state funding uh, will remain there because that's critical in order to leverage, again, our Measure X dollars uh, to deliver on these projects. And we've been pretty successful over the last few cycles of acquiring funding. And so we want to maintain that relationship. And so uh, with that, um, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Christina to go through uh, the legislative platform. Okay, thank you, Gus. Um, so just real quick, uh, federal legislative news, a lot, of course, is in flux right now in DC, including transportation issues. Um, so just focusing in on that, it looks uh, based on the hearings yesterday that Mayor Pete Buttigieg or former Mayor Pete Buttigieg is likely to be confirmed as the Secretary of the Department of Transportation. And uh, his platform includes supporting uh, Vision Zero, which is pedestrian bicycle safety concerns, um, those kinds of, of programs that we've talked about at this board previously. Um, he supports transit funding for more rural and smaller areas, um, smaller populated areas. He supports complete streets projects and um, has also talked about uh, the potential for raising the gas tax, although he walked back those comments, and then also the uh, potential for implementing a national um, vehicle registration fee alternative to the gas tax. So I think uh, we're all very um, interested to see how this develops and how things move forward with their proposed um, intensive investment in EV, EV technology and um, electric vehicle technology and, and infrastructure along with our state's support for that. So that could be a big booming area for us soon. Um, also our uh, new president supports rail uh, famously and specifically has spoken in support of the California High Speed Rail Project. And they're looking to tie transportation investments to efforts to correct and atone for past racial inequities in transportation funding and implementation. So 
there's a lot going on and <laughs> we're gonna keep watching it and we'll be back to um, present any, any updates to you um, in the future. So um, if no one has any questions about the state or federal updates, I can move on to present the draft 2021 legislative program for your consideration today. Uh, so we'll ask the board. I don't see any hands raised. Christina, I think we're ready. Okay. Are you able to see my screen right now? I think we can. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So our proposed 2021 uh, legislative program was presented to this board back in October after a brainstorming session at the executive committee. It was then circulated to our various committees. We have a bicycle pedestrian committee, technical advisory committee, rail policy committee. We talked about it with the county and MST partners uh, pursuing uh, collaborative transportation efforts in our legislative programs. And uh, it, we also worked with our partner agencies statewide to make sure that we were reflecting issues that everybody is concerned about. Um, there are a lot of things that are holdovers from previous years because they haven't been resolved yet. Um, there are a few, we did have a success. Um, our past chair mentioned that our bill that Senator Monning authored for us did uh, get signed into law that enabled the Highway 156 project to move forward and secure funding. So that was a, a big success in 2020 on our legislative program. Looking ahead for our state priorities, we want to preserve funding uh, for transportation and uh, pursue competitive grant or bond funding for our various transportation priority projects. We are interested in promoting jobs, housing balance and alternative transportation modes as a way to reduce vehicle mile traveled. Um, and we have a big concern throughout this program of maintaining statewide equity between urban and rural areas. Uh, here is our EV item relevant to both the state and federal uh, efforts on this issue. So we support funding for uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure, electric power storage capacity, and rebates for electric vehicle purchase. Um, 5S re relates to the issue that Gus raised about the decrease in purchasing power of the gas tax and the fact that in 2020 uh, gas tax income was, was much reduced uh, compared to prior years due to the shelter in place orders across the state. So we're looking at alternative, um, alternative funding mechanisms for transportation investments. And we're not taking a position on, on which, but just uh, helping to explore all the various concepts that are being proposed. Item 6S is uh, supporting funding to increase broadband infrastructure capacity. This is a new item for us. Uh, due to the pandemic and shelter in place and, and a lot of Zoom meetings, <laughs> it really became very obvious that there's uh, inequity in broadband access and uh, trying to bridge the digital divide and um, tying it to the telecommuting as a way to reduce vehicle miles traveled to make it relevant for transportation. Um, 7S has to do with uh, the rail project on the central coast. We have a couple of different rail projects, so that's not what I'm here to talk about today, but <laughs> we support those rail projects um, in our legislative program by um, working with the state transportation agency to fund them. Um, item 8S, uh, public-private partnership, uh, partnership authority expired a few years ago, so we're supporting the reauthorization of, of that uh, as one of the modes for project implementation. Item 9S, support legislation to increase safety and reduce fatalities, and this is the Vision Zero effort that uh, the city of Monterey in particular and, and others across our region are looking at to try to reduce uh, fatalities on our, on our roadways. Uh, 10S is supporting legislation to devote more funding to the very much oversubscribed active transportation program. We've gotten a few grants from that program, but it is a very, a very popular program. So it's always uh, crossing our fingers when we apply. Um, 11S has to do with uh, making it easier to deliver projects. So there's a lot of uh, different sort of uh, barriers to project delivery that we're looking to uh, simplify. Item 12S is working with our partners at MST to update the 
law that governs how trans transit gets funded called the Transportation Development Act or TDA. Item 13S is helping MST to get funding to implement the 100% zero emission bus fleet rule by 2040, which seems like it might be a ways off, but there's they have a, um, a, a milestone requirements between now and 2040 that they need to achieve uh, to, to meet the, the deadlines. <clears throat> Uh, item 4S is promoting transit-oriented development, complete streets, and other um, multimodal transportation efforts. 15S has to do, again, with the COVID pandemic, uh, reforming the Brown Act to enhance transparency and public access to allow the, the continued use of remote access to public meetings past the emergency situation that we're currently in. And then 16S is something that where we just support our partner agencies as long as they're consistent with our adopted priorities. On to the federal program. I still don't, don't see any hands raised, so I will continue on. Um, the federal priorities, there are quite a few related to funding. <laughs> so 1F is all about funding. Um, we have supporting funding for MST to restore pre-COVID-19 service levels. Uh, this language was provided to us by MST. We, um, item two is supporting the increase and or indexing the gas tax to inflation. It hasn't been raised since the 1990s. Uh, through, item three is the same as what we have on the state level regarding um, other funding mechanisms for transportation. Item four is expanding access to Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act loans that are very challenging to get now. Uh, item five is removing the procedural obstacles. This is again about streamlining um, federal funding access. Item six is supporting the return of directed federal funding for transportation priorities, which is something that has been discussed quite a bit lately at the federal level. It was something that we were successful in getting back when they used to do that. Um, Item seven is something that came from the executive committee coordinating with military installations in Monterey County as uh, public private partnerships to seek funding for transportation with nexus to those installations. Um, item eight is supporting Monterey Salinas Transit's application for federal funding for the bus line and the Monterey Branch Line corridor called the SURF. Item nine is supporting applications for the Build Grant, uh, which is better utilizing investments to leverage development, which might be renamed <laughs> shortly. Um, we have no one on the Central Coast has ever been successful in getting a Build Grant yet. So we keep trying. Um, and finally, item 10 here is supporting funding for resilient infrastructure projects. That's in response to climate change impacts on our infrastructure, for example, sea level rise or wildfires. And then we have uh, a few more items on the federal program allowing the California Environmental Quality Act, which is in most cases more stringent than the National Environmental Poly Policy Act to be a substitute for that. And item 3F has to do with the broadband and internet access issue uh, from the federal perspective. Item 4F has to do with federal rail funding. There's a silos between commuter funding and, and inner city rail funding that make no sense to the traveling public. And um, item 5S has to do with supporting Amtrak funding and especially restoring their service to pre-COVID-19 service levels. We have one Amtrak train that comes through Monterey County, the Coast Starlight, which was reduced from a one daily round trip to a thrice weekly uh, schedule, which is very confusing. <laughs> and then finally 6F is our supporting our friends. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, board, I don't see any hands raised, so we'll offer uh, one more time. Um, I see. It looks one. like Mayor Labar has his hand Mayor raised. Mayor Labar, go ahead. Um, I just want to thank Tamsin and the board and the other committees. Um, I think we have a well-rounded um, set of priorities, and um, as you mentioned earlier, with the focus of the new administration and some of the talk coming out from the soon-to-be Secretary of Transportation, we're very well suited. Uh, moving forward on the disadvantage and the equity issues while having all these plans in place. 
And um, I do want to thank the executive committee for um, the couple of things that I really were passionate about getting into our priorities was looking at those alternative or innovative methods of permanent funding mechanisms for infrastructure. And then um, adding the server farm into the state portion for the, the equity of the broadband and the ability to reduce vehicle miles traveled through telecommuting. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I see a hand raised, uh, Luis. Yeah, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I do want to just comment and, and thank the staff and on this board for also prioritizing the, the digital divide issue um, because I think the pandemic is going to change the way uh, people uh, work and certainly on the impact on our kids and seeing that so many of our kids did not have the basic necessities of access to internet so they could just do their virtual classrooms as limited as, as they are um, already. Um, it's worse when you can't even uh, connect uh, or a household has multiple children trying to access it and not having the bandwidth to be able to have uh, the virtual streaming of their classrooms. So I think um, I think this effort, we're gonna, we're gonna see a significant effort, not only at the federal level, um, uh, President Biden already has has uh, um, committed um, uh, billions of dollars towards addressing this issue. But I think at the statewide level, we, we, are, we're, we are looking to put a multi-billion dollar bond uh, to hopefully address this issue once and for all in our state. I think the governor is open to it, the leadership and the assembly and the Senate are open to it. And this is one of those issues where Tamsi could be, really be a leader in terms of uh, with the transportation uh, perspective on addressing this equity issue of the digital divide. So I think uh, this, this is something I look forward to on uh, to working on, but also uh, the California State Association of Counties has made this a priority, and uh, we look forward to um, uh, being part of the conversations that will happen this year on on on, on the bond and on other pieces of legislation that are, are addressing this issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I uh, don't see any other hands, so last call for any board members that might have uh, any comments. Uh, I think we need to take it out to the public as well. Uh, correct, Christina. For any uh, public members that might be participating, now would be the time to uh, ask any questions. Uh, not hearing any, I think uh, Christina will just, uh, we received the report and there's no action uh, needed. There by is an action actually, yeah, we're asking you to adopt the legislative program. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll move That's that. our motion to approve, adopt. I move second. or second. Okay, I heard uh, Mike Labar uh, motion and a second from Luis Alejo. Okay, let's take the uh, the vote. All those in favor? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I think we'll need a roll call vote. We had a, a little blip here. Um, so we need a roll call vote. Go ahead, staff. District 1, Supervisor Alejo. Aye. District 2, Supervisor Phillips. Aye. That's my goal. District 3, Supervisor Lopez. Aye. District 4, Supervisor Askew. Aye. District 5, Supervisor Adams. Aye. City of Carmel by the Sea. Aye. City of Delray Oaks. Aye. City of Gonzales. City of Greenfield. Aye. City of King City. Aye. City of Marina. City of Marina. City of Monterey. Aye. Marina. City of Pacific Grove. Aye. City of Salinas. Yes. City of San City. City of Seaside. Aye. City of Soledad. Aye. Uh, Chair, the motion passes 15-0. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is uh, item number eight, uh, staff. Yeah, good, good morning, everybody. My name is Madeline Jacobson, transportation planner with the Transportation Agency. And I have a presentation this morning for you on the Regional Transportation Plan update. So I'm gonna confirm you can see the, um, the presentation. Yep, can see it. 
Wonderful. So uh, this morning, the purpose of this morning's update is to give you an overview on the regional transportation planning process timeline and get your uh, ultimate accept exception approval of the regional transportation plans project list. So the regional transportation plan is really the foundation of our role as, a as the transportation agency for Monterey County guiding our planning projects, investments, and ultimately our, our region's future, you could say. Um, so the Regional Transportation Plan document is a very visionary document that provides a foundation for the funding priorities over the 20 plus year life of the, the plan. It provides a basis for the allocations of both state and federal funding to our region and furthermore, it's part of a regional collaboration effort as our plan gets combined with both San Benito County and Santa Cruz County's regional transportation plans into what's called the Metropolitan Transportation Plan and Sustainable Communities Strategy that is produced by AMBAG. So the regional transportation plan encompasses the integrated funding plan that TAMC prepares every two years um, which is a five-year planning document, and that includes uh, the combination of state, federal, and local funding. The financial assumptions behind the integrated funding plan are then integrated into the regional transportation plan, as well as the metropolitan transportation plan and sustainable communities strategy, which is otherwise referred to as the MTPSCS, so an acronym for you. But the Metropolitan Transportation Plan and Sustainable Community Strategy is where we see the real integration between both transportation planning and land use planning as it relates to forecasted growth in the Monterey Bay region. So the Regional Transportation Plan has a few required elements pursuant to a state and federal law. That includes the policy element, which was adopted by our board of directors in February of 2020, as well as the financial element and the action element, which are uh, currently in progress. And those will be the focus of the actions requested today. The policy element of the regional transportation plan provides the framework for selecting projects for the 20 plus year planning document. And that means it includes the identification of goals, objectives, and performance metric, me, metrics or measures. The policies included in our updated policy element were built from the agency's 2018 plan, but they were also informed by a public facing survey on regional transportation planning priorities, as well as a survey by our, uh, of our board of directors that was conducted live in 2019. So this graphic shows the results of one question asked about barriers to accessible transportation in the county during the October board meeting. And this next graphic showcases what members of our board expressed um, as defined, expressed in defining regional transportation priorities for our county. So the policy element collectively maintains consistency with the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, as well as the California State Transportation Plan. Modifications to our 2018 plans goals include adding a greater emphasis on geographic equity, the integration of public health and health equity, as well as a reflection of habitat preservation efforts. And we adjusted some of the performance metrics to reflect and monitor some of the, the current projects and programs undergoing in our, in our county, including our Safe Routes to Schools program, as well as the Regional Travel Demand Program, GO831. And the adopted policy element was included um, as a web attachment to your staff report. So the financial element. This section of the presentation is about funding the projects and programs envisioned in the 20 plus year planning document and it was a major focus of the year 2020. It included adjustments to the financial projections as we um, at staff coordinated with our jurisdictions and monitored the state's projections of Senate Bill 1 funding and the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on our, our funding forecast. 
So this diagram shows you revenues by overall fund source with about 50% of the projected revenues being local funds. So of course, an example of one of our main local fund sources is Measure X. And an example of a, Senate, a state funding source is Senate Bill 1 funds, uh, or often referred to as the gas tax. And an example of the federal fund source are those administered through the US Department of Transportation, including a handful of federal transit administration fund programs that fund uh, our transit agency. So current revenue assumptions show $6.7 billion projected over the life of the 20 plus year planning document. But important to note that federal guidance allows our agency to identify revenues that we can reasonably expect to be available over the horizon of the plan. So in that case, this uh, projection could include a replacement to the gas tax, such as a vehicle miles traveled fee. So this slide shows revenues limited by project type. So of the $6.7 billion that we identified, a large portion of it is restricted to certain project types. But there is a, about $462 million that is uh, flexible funding that's not specifically tied to a particular project type or funding program. So the project lists, um, any project that a city anticipates receiving state or federal funding for has to be identified in the project list. So in our region, we divide the projects into four re uh, corridors being the North Monterey County gateways, the Salinas to Monterey corridor, the inland Salinas Valley corridor and the coastal corridor in state route one. So throughout the plan, projects are referenced in two primary ways. One is as a non-regional or a local project and as well as regionally significant projects, such as those in, identified in Measure X. Before I really showcase the uh, changes to our project list, um, I wanna dive into what I mean when I refer to project being on a constrained list versus an unconstrained project. So projects that are identified to be on the constrained project list are those that are deemed financially feasible. They already have committed or programmed funds or the agency reasonably anticipates receiving funding such as through a grant program. Projects identified on the unconstrained list are those that do not have any programmed or committed funds and are not likely to be fully funded within the 20 year life of the plan. So for this morning's presentation, I'm gonna focus on highlighting changes from our 2018 regional transportation plan as uh, to the 2022 regional transportation plan. So not every single project will be covered in the presentation, but it was attached, um, the regionally significant project list was attached to your staff report. So here's a big picture funding summary of fiscally constrained projects by general project type. And so the chart shows that about 50% of the project types are highway or local roadway projects and about the other 50% are public transit such as the rail projects or MSTs projects in active transportation efforts. And the purple there uh, showing the other category is mostly airport projects. However, categorizing project by project type isn't so simple when it comes to the regional transportation plan. There are multiple ways that bicycle and pedestrian projects in particular are showcased throughout the document. And so one is, um, in and of themselves as a regionally significant regional bike pet project, such as the Fort Ord Regional Trail and Greenway, or as an element of a greater regional roadway project, such as the State Route 156 Castroville Boulevard interchange, which included elements of bicycle and pedestrian safety as, as within the project scope. And thirdly, uh, bicycle and pedestrian projects are seen on the individual city or county project list 
where cities identify more discreetly plans for bicycle and pedestrian improvements, such as a specific facility for bikes on a specific roadway. And in the context of the regionally significant project list, those more local project listings are considered grouped. And so their summary numbers were at the bottom of the regionally significant project list. So here I go into the uh, changes to the constrained project list. So most of the proposed changes to the fiscally constrained project list reflect the removal of projects that are not moving forward and breaking out phases of larger regional projects. So we do not show any totally brand new projects this year. So first, the State Route 218 Operational Improvement Project. This project was identified to be removed from the unconstrained list to the fiscally constrained list for the 2022 plan. The US 101 South of Salinas Improvement Project had various elements independently listed within the Regional Transportation Plan, and it's now been consolidated as one project. The scenic State Route 68 corridor improvements also had various elements included in the previous Regional Transportation Plan, and it also has a revised description and a consolidated listing in the 2022 plan. The Fort Ord Regional Trail and Greenway project now has a handful of individual phases identified that are either actively pursuing construction funds. Um, so that is one small change. We also have the rail extension to Monterey County project, which shows a couple of the individual phases listed out separately as well as the King City Roundabout at US 101 and Broadway, which was previously included in what I referred to the group listings, um, but it's now shown on the regional significant project list. So the projects identified to be shifted from the regionally significant list to the unconstrained list include the State Route 68 roundabout at Chomp, which is not moving forward, and the larger, grander Coast Rail project. However, the uh, King City Station has been identified to remain on the constrained project list. So to transition now to the fiscally unconstrained project list, um, changes to the regionally significant unconstrained project list largely reflect brand new projects that are coming out of planning studies and the removal of projects that are just not moving forward. So projects identified to be added to the regionally significant unconstrained project list include the State Route 1 Improvement Project, which is a product of the Highway 1 Coastal Resiliency Study that was led by AMBAG. The Around the Bay Rail Project, which is a product of the Monterey Bay Rail Network Integration Study, as well as the Highway 1 Monterey Road Fremont Interchange Project, which is an element of a, the formerly included State Route 1 widening project. And as I just mentioned, so the State Route 1 widening project is one of those identified to be removed from the regionally significant unconstrained project list. However, the goals of the State Route 1 widening project are still reflected within the RTP, um, largely through the surf busway and bus traffic transit project, as well as that interchange, the State Highway 1 California Fremont Avenue interchange project that I just mentioned. The State Route 68 bypass or widening project was historically listed unconstrained with no committed uh, funds and it has been identified to be removed from the unconstrained project list due to a lack of funding. The State Route 68, State Route 1 overcrossing project is no longer moving forward. So it's also been identified to be removed from the unconstrained list. The Imjim Parkway full widening from four to six lanes was identified as no longer needed by the city of Marina due to a more recently completed uh, traffic study. So I know that's a lot, a lot of projects, but we can have discussion and answer questions uh, following the presentation. So collectively, the action element of the plan 
is the component of the document where projects are identified and those that align with the policy objectives and performance measures are prioritized for funding within the 20 year horizon of the planning document. As far as next steps go, in 2020, we did have the adoption of the goals, policy objectives and performance measures as well as staff in coordination with our partner agencies and the jurisdictions updated the project list and the program cost. The uh, 2021 items include adoption of the project list for uh, analysis in the Regional Transportation Plan, Metropolitan Transportation Plan and Sustainable Community Strategy. And in December, the TAMC board can expect to receive the full draft regional transportation plan and open it for formal public comment. And in June 2022, the board will receive the uh, final regional transportation plan and the uh, joint CEQA findings from the document. Yes, 2020 is done. <laughs> So for this morning, the recommended actions I have before you are receiving an update on the development of the 2022 Regional Transportation Plan and approving the project list to be studied as part of the 2022 Regional Transportation Plan and Metropolitan Transportation Plan and Sustainable Communities Strategy and approve the financial assumptions for use in the financial forecast for the regional transportation plan and metropolitan transportation plan and sustainable communities strategy. So with that, um, this is my contact information and um, we can open it up to questions and discussion. And I also have my colleague, Mike Zeller, who helped lead the financial side of the uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, Madeline. Um, right now, I think it's probably appropriate we open this up for uh, conversation, but uh, I don't see any hands raised, so the invite is there. Are there any questions um, of staff for their presentation? Actually, my hand is raised, uh, Chair Smith. All right, great. Go thank ahead. You. Go ahead, Mary. Thanks very much. So I was just curious about the um, the project of on uh, Highway 68 um, at the uh, community hospital the roundabout that had been proposed there. And I am wondering if that went from um, unconstrained to off the table because the current roundabout, the big roundabout solved the problem or was it a funding um, issue? You're right on it. That's the main, uh, one of the main reasons that it was identified to be removed. Which one, the funding <laughs> or the, because it took care, we took care of the problem with the yeah. magic with the magic that, roundabout. The magic of the roundabout took care of the problem. Okay, great. Um, Thank you so much. That's mm -hmm. good. Thanks. Uh, next up, uh, let's go to uh, Chaps Padori. You have a question? Thank you, thank you Chair. Um, Madeline, and thank you for the excellent presentation, especially for folks like me who are just joining. Um, the uh, I had a question. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the projects get uh, removed off the unconstrained list. Um, uh, where do they go after that? They basically, um, when they're removed from the unconstrained project list, they can always eventually be brought back um, because we update the document every four years. But when they're removed from the unconstrained project list, they're uh, essentially, I don't know the best way to put it, uh, removed from the, the vision of the long-term plan. So, um, okay. And so it, it takes, a, um, and a, like for me to bring it back, um, uh, is it, is the plan, the process for bringing any such project back in the future? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, John, uh, John, let's go ahead and go to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just wanted to express appreciation uh, to Madeline and the whole TAMC team. We've been able to work with them on the development of the RTP list and project. And it, refl it reflects uh, a good vision for the county and it reflects what we support you know, as a project list. Projects that needed to be added have been added. Those that needed to be moved to unconstrained or obsoleted, those have been like, like for example, the one that was highlighted of interest is the uh, State Route 68 bypass. Uh, that historical project is something that's it's good to take it off the unconstrained list. It's something we ourselves at Caltrans are pursuing um, 
dissolving the series of memorandums that we have with the different cities and the county on that. So that, that's, that's the right move and the right step as well. And it also, the list also reflects um, projects of significance that support reduction of vehicle miles traveled, because that's an important thing as well, as we all try to implement our transportation projects as well as land, land use projects. So we're, we're glad to see the list where it's at and we've enjoyed working with staff and the TAC in developing it. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Labar. Thank you, Chair. Um, the roundabout project in King City, I just wanna point out how important that is that a small rural community is implementing these, these new mechanisms. And for the board to know, King City has one light stop this roundabout will remove that light stop. So that's kind of an interesting thing for us. It is a, it's been a frustrating intersection and this project is going to make it better for all of our lives. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't see any other hands. Staff, do you see any uh, hands that we have not picked up? I do not. Okay, great. I think uh, we should turn this out to the public and see if there's any comments from public. Okay, um, I'm not sure staff's picking up any other comments coming from anybody else. Okay, at this time, uh, we'll turn to the board. We'll entertain a motion, and we're looking at a motion consolidated of one, two, and three staff recommendations. So moved, Chair. Second. Okay, I believe that was, uh, let's see, Mayor Oglesby, and the second was? Potter. Oh, thank you. Mr. Potter. Thank you for the uh, the motion the second. Eloise. District one, Supervisor Alejo. Aye. District two, Supervisor Phillips. Aye. District three, Supervisor Lopez. Aye. District four, Supervisor Askew. Aye. District five, Supervisor Adams. Aye. City of Carmel by the Sea. Aye. City of Del Rey Oaks. Aye. City of Gonzales. City of Greenfield. Aye. City of King City. Aye. City of Marina. Aye. City of Monterey. Aye. City of Pacific Grove. Aye. City of Salinas. Yes. City of San City. City of Seaside. Aye. City of Soledad. Aye. Chair, the motion passes 16 to 0. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, this next item is uh, number nine uh, reports from transportation providers. Uh, first on the list, I think, is Caltrans. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, glad to be here again. My name is John Olenek from Caltrans District 5 on behalf of our district director uh, to present our project report, which you have in your packet, as well as just make a few uh, brief comments. Obviously, with the stormy conditions, uh, our crew, our maintenance crews are busy from one end of the district to the other, trying to keep the road safe for the traveling public. Just wanted to mention that our, tr our Transportation Management Center, our TMC, is open 24 hours right now to help uh, mo monitor activities going on throughout the district. But events like this bring to mind the importance of keeping informed. So just re reminding everyone of, in addition to our press releases that we send out regularly as things happen, uh, we also have our district's uh, Facebook account and Twitter. And so it, it, that, in addition to our Quick Map app, are some of the best ways to communicate and, and to know what's going on coming from Caltrans. So if uh, you don't happen to have any of those uh, attached to, to your devices, uh, we'd be glad to assist you with that. Also wanted to uh, mention go, that uh, going to our just general announcements, uh, part of uh, under our news release, since I mentioned the news release, part of the activity going on with the storm event obviously is the potential evacuations. So we have Highway 1 close right now working with Monterey County on that. Uh, another news release that has recently gone forward has to do with the closure of two lanes of Highway 101 um, of, the, of the northbound lanes around the San Antonio Bridge area. This will be a long-term closure. We did a news release on that and you can provide more information uh, if requested. 
but essentially the northbound lanes will be crossed over to the southbound lanes to the duration of this closure, uh, which will begin on, well, weather depending, uh, on, on Friday, January 21st, and then ending in April of, of this year as well. So that pretty much concludes uh, my announcements. We've in the past made mention of our sustainable transportation grant program. That call for projects is still open. We've announced that in the last couple of months, but it is coming to a close. Uh, proposals for those grants are due on February 12th. So if uh, any of your staff or uh, uh, in the community might be considering something, uh, we welcome that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, any questions from, and I see Kimberly. Uh, go ahead, Kimberly. <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, pleasure to meet you. I'm the new uh, mayor of Salinas and just wanted to make you aware the city is going to be working on a new subcommittee that includes debris and litter within the city limits. Um, certainly know that Caltrans has been working collaboratively with city staff on the on ramps and off ramps right there at 101 um, for garbage purposes, but um, just wanted to give you a heads up. Sorry to do it in such a public meeting, but wanted to give you a heads up that we're going to be form formulating a subcommittee to be addressing some of those um, issues that are both on city property and on Caltrans property. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, any other board members have questions uh, for Caltrans? Yes, I have a, a quick one for John. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but I, I missed the part, if you wouldn't mind reminding me where the two lanes on 101 are closed. I'm going to go back to my news release on that. So it's at the northbound bridge at the San Antonio River, which is north of Camp Roberts. So it's kind of in Got the it. southern Monterey County area. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay. Any other questions for Caltrans? Uh, seeing none, let's go to our next partner at Monterey Peninsula Airport. Bill? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, appreciate the opportunity, as always, to, to speak. Um, the, the airport has several uh, projects uh, that we've approved and have started uh, underway, and uh, they're bringing a lot of jobs to the area, and that's dealing with taxiways and um, aprons and service roads. So that's a good thing for us. And uh, in our, our particular stressful financial times, bringing in employment to the area is is always a good thing. And we're pr kind of proud of that. Um, and it's an enhancement to the airport as well. Um, as far as service, service uh, airline service to the airport, which a lot of people are interested in, uh, in December, we had no cancellations. And that's always been a complaint of uh, many of the, the, the county residents here. And so we had no cancellations. We've done a good job, partly due to the, the good weather. Uh, we've restored service to Denver and Los Angeles uh, with United. Uh, they're suffering under the uh, diminished uh, uh, passenger counts, but they're bringing service back to those uh, two cities, which is vital to us. And um, they're uh, also, uh, were they, we've had a delay in the service start to Seattle. Uh, that's not gone away, but Alaska is, is mindful of uh, the people that a number of people that are traveling and they delayed that for ab about two months, but they're still going to plan on having service to Seattle and uh, Allegiant Airlines will be starting uh, twice a, a week service to uh, Portland uh, out of Monterey. Uh, and that's a, that's a, that's a good thing for us here. And uh, uh, We'll be offering, one of the things I'm kind of proud of for the airport is uh, our, in combination with our fuel provider, uh, our fuel FBO, we'll be providing, uh, starting to provide uh, sustainable fuel uh, for a jet aircraft. Uh, this is a new uh, program, uh, a new fuel alternative, which will allow us to reduce um, emissions from aircraft, uh, jet aircraft by up to 80%. So uh, it have, will have a great impact on CO2 uh, emission reduction. And uh, that's going to start and be phased in over the next couple of years at the airport. That's a huge step forward. And uh, uh, we, uh, for those who are uh, 
I'm familiar with the Golden Tea and we're fans of the Golden Tea, uh, which is the restaurant at the airport. Uh, it's been replaced by Woody's at the airport uh, uh, under the guidance of Tim Wood, who used to be the chef over at uh, Carmel uh, Valley Ranch. And um, he's getting excellent reviews over there and they've restarted service, uh, pick up, at least pickup service. And I understand that the feedback is that the meals are excellent. And so uh, if you're, you're in the business of picking up a meal, uh, try that airport. And I'm sure that uh, outside services will be available when the weather improves. And finally, um, we are at the airport starting to take a strong interest. And I want to bring this to the attention of the whole board and, and the planners into urban air mobility. This is the uh, uh, manned, and unmanned uh, electric vehicles. Uh, air, the, some of them look like helicopters, some don't, but it's gonna have an impact in the future. It's becoming huge. Um, this is for package delivery, cargo delivery, and passenger delivery. And uh, certainly uh, major metropolitan areas like San Francisco and, and San Jose have already started planning for that. It's going to affect Monterey County too because people and, and cargo uh, packages will be coming into the area and they need a place to land and they'll need infrastructure to recharge the airplane. And there is nobody in Monterey County that is even talking about the planning for that. And uh, it will affect the cities and uh, you will have to dev develop your own ordinances and uh, approaches to uh, allowing these vehicles to come in and uh, uh, land at, at your facility to deliver uh, packages, uh, deliver cargo, and deliver passengers. Uh, Marina Airport uh, is uh, already has a, a company, Joby uh, International, that is developing these vehicles. And I think it's important to keep on the radar uh, for going forward because it's it's going to be as important to reducing emissions uh, because these are all electric vehicles. It's going to be as important to reducing uh, emissions and uh, travel as uh, bicycles are right now and other vehicles. So thank you for the opportunity to share. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, any members uh, have any questions for the Monterey Airport rep? Just a quick one. Okay. Go ahead, Mary. Thank you. Thanks, Bill, for the update. Um, and I think everybody is absolutely intrigued with the quote unquote flying cars. Um, just a, a question for you, though. Would you envision that they would be limited to landing only at the airports? They wouldn't be able to come into, say, the city of Monterey and, and land at the conference center to be able to drop things off there. How, how, uh, how do you envision that being regulated? Uh, no, uh, it is not limited to just the airport. And, and right now, the, none of the airports are taking any kind of lead in preparing for this thing, but, it, but they will need to provide some infrastructure for recharging the, the, the aircraft and stuff like that. And by the way, it's not um, a, a flying cars. It's, uh, these are not automobiles <laughs> with wings, uh, but they are more, a little bit more in the, in the line of a helicopter. It will affect the cities. They will land in the cities and they will deliver passengers uh, sometimes on top of buildings, or at least there will be attempts to land them on top of buildings, on top of hotels. Uh, and uh, it's going to present some new challenges and considerations for uh, local jurisdictions. It is not limited to just the airport. It is going to be, um, there's going to be many satellites, satellite landing locations around the area, uh, around each, uh, in each city, and including rural areas. And uh, so uh, I'm just trying to bring that up as an alert. Uh, I intend to try to encourage our board to take a, a stronger role in at least the planning for this because right now there is no planning going on in our county for this. There is planning going on in uh, the, the uh, Bay Area County. So uh, I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you so much. Very helpful. Thank you, uh, Mayor Labar. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Bill, that's very interesting. It's great to hear. 
Um, what could be helpful is if there's any requirements of like the, you know, the pad size they would need for landing, those types of things that we can start putting into our planning processes. Um, uh, yes, there, there is, uh, there's initiatives underway right now to, uh, by the uh, uh, several, uh, the, uh, the Transportation Research Board and, and a number of other commercial agencies to identify the, the, uh, the municipal needs for landing pads and charging stations. Um, that's the other aspect of this thing is, is that's often overlooked is you got to re recharge these vehicles and having enough uh, grid capacity to do that and having uh, charging capacity in, in the city itself is going to be um, represent some considerations for future planning. And I'm sure Carl has already had to, to deal with this a little bit with his move towards 100% uh, uh, sustainable uh, buses. So yes, there will, I will uh, try to feed as much information out as, as I can uh, to uh, help in, the, in this process for, uh, for future long range planning. And it, it is, it is I want to, what I want to emphasize, I guess, is it's moved out of the realm of science fiction into reality. And there's a lot of money going into this, huge dollars going into this thing. And it's got a lot of federal support from the FAA, but they are not taking a lead position. And if there's some, you know, since we have an airport in King City, if there's um, any opportunity for me to be involved in any discussions or please keep me in the loop. Um, I do I'm know at our, at our airport, we just went through a planning stage, a master planning, and we did um, at least locate some areas that could be used for the charging infrastructure and started identifying those things. But any way I could stay involved, I appreciate. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Chair. Well, I will do that. I can see a future time when uh, Mayor Labar is going to be arriving at our meetings in Salinas uh, by air, a battery operated, of course. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions here. Uh, Bill, thank you very much. Uh, let's turn to our partner, uh, MST, Carl. Thank you, Chair. A uh, few items to discuss. Um, and thanks again for uh, rec the recognition uh, for all our efforts uh, uh, during the, the past uh, year coming up on now. Um, <clears throat> so uh, with the storms, uh, MST, uh, again, uh, has been working with County OES and our partners to uh, be available to assist in any uh, potential evacuations, uh, uh, especially near the Carmel Valley Village area and uh, those populations uh, in some of the resident care facilities. We've not been called upon to do that yet. Uh, just an interesting note, uh, we did use some uh, recently deployed software that we used during the uh, fires uh, to identify uh, exact locations of residents with access and functional needs who are our MST rides clients, persons with severe disabilities. Um, and uh, we identified about a dozen or so persons in the evacuation area uh, in and around the uh, River Fire region and were able to coordinate with the county sheriffs who deployed deputies to each of those residents and ensured that uh, all of those folks were evacuated uh, before we had to have an emergency situation. So I was pleased to see that we were able to uh, uh, work together with county public safety to help move uh, some people out of harm's way before we had to send our, our drivers there. Um, in addition to that, I just wanna bring you all up to speed on a couple of projects that are going on with MST. Our, you, know, you heard uh, earlier about our surf busway project and there've been some presentations and we've been doing a lot of outreach working with TAMC staff on this. And we are now um, uh, taking it up to the next level. And we are putting out a survey that you can find on our website at mst.org where we're asking community members who, whether they're planning to ride or, or even if they're not planning to ride the surf, what sort of transit amenities um, and features that they would like to see uh, and what outcomes they would like to achieve with this project so that we can uh, continue to move through the design process and, and get as much public input 
uh, and reflect the will of the, of the public as much as possible here in Monterey County. So, um, so between now and February 19th, please, uh, if you have an interest in the SURF project, please go to our website at mst.org. And uh, we'd appreciate any input we can get. And uh, we'll be putting word out to all our community leaders to try to get this promoted through your own social media and through your own community social media um, so that we can get as much input as possible on this project. Also, I'd like to let you know that we are working on a what's called a comprehensive operational analysis. And what that is is a very deep dive into transit routing frequencies, where does transit go? And we're trying to uh, rebuild uh, and what will our services look like uh, post COVID and into the future. So we'll be reaching out to all of our member communities and to all of our stakeholders, including you. And so when you, heard, when you hear the term comprehensive operational analysis, I, we don't want your eyes to glaze over and uh, uh, ignore our emails on this. It is, it is going to be a discussion about what the future of transit will look like in our community. So it's really important uh, for us to get our community stakeholders involved. And then finally, I just like to express some disappointment. We received some news yesterday that um, the governor um, and state public health officials removed public transit workers from the tier two of, uh, actually removed the entirety of tier two from the vaccination plans. And uh, as you heard earlier, MST uh, staff have been on the front lines every day, uh, all day, every day, whether it was Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, since the beginning of this, uh, we're closing in on a million passengers carried since the beginning of the shelter in place. Um, and I'll be reaching out to our Monterey County Health Officer. I, I've, I've reached out earlier uh, and have been in regular county uh, contact with our health officer to get our frontline employees, our drivers and our, our, our frontline supervisors who are working with the public every day. Um, and like I said, who had contact with, uh, 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 we're closing in on a million right now by the end of this month, um, uh, just individual passengers. Uh, we'd like to see them uh, afforded the same protections as other essential workers in our community um, so we're going to be, uh, uh, I'm going to be advocating for that portion of our workforce uh, to be included back in and be given some priority to uh, receive this vaccination. So that concludes my report. We have to answer any questions. Thank you, Carl. Um, any board members with questions for uh, Carl? Okay, and seeing none, let's turn it to our partners at Monterey Bay Air Resources. Uh, Richard, are you there? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, some good news, bad news. Uh, good news is we um, have been really going like gangbusters with our EV incentive program. Uh, the bad news is we've run out of funds due to the popularity of the program. So those funds were exhausted in record time. And with those funds, we were able to incentivize uh, the purchase or lease of over 240 vehicles. And unfortunately, only 11 of those vehicles went to low income qualified uh, folks or applicants. So we're hoping to do better uh, with our program next year. And we're also trying to look for partners to help us uh, provide additional monies to that program so we can have it uh, go longer than about six months. And that's that's how long it took to go through about $500,000. Um, with respect to the EV and EV program, we've got our infrastructure component. And as I may have mentioned previously, our contractor recently installed DC fast charging stations at Target stores in Hollister and in Marina. We also recently uh, had them install a DC fast charging station at the shopping center in King City. And then our contractor has begun uh, the initial work on construction for a new DC fast charging station in Castroville at the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Um, that station will be open and available to the public. And then lastly, um, through our zero emission school bus program, we've uh, processed 25 applications and delivered 12 new electric school buses to school districts throughout our three county jurisdiction. The most recent delivery was the Chilar School District uh, last month. And I uh, would be remiss if I didn't mention our partner. They've been kicking in about half of the funding for this program and that is 
uh, formerly Monterey Community Power uh, 3CE is providing funding. We hope to get additional funding this year to uh, actually get uh, more school buses uh, electrified uh, in the coming uh, uh, fiscal year. So uh, good news on that front. Uh, we're continuing to press forward. If anybody has um, uh, uh, property or knows of property that's shovel ready and in a good location for uh, charging infrastructure, please let us know. We can move you to the top of the line. That seems to be the uh, biggest drawback with the uh, installation of these stations is site agreements and that sort of thing. And of course, electrical trenching is another one. So availability of electricity is important, but um, we've been moving pretty well. We've got uh, almost $2 million to spend in that program. So uh, we've been doing that for the last uh, number of years and hopefully we'll be able to continue that going forward. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you, Richard. Uh, I see a hand to Mike Lavar. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Richard, yeah, it is uh, disconcerting, you know, the good and the bad, right? You've got a lot of vehicles out there, but only a certain amount, 11, went to the population. You're trying to get more people involved. So um, I would look at the ability of tapping in some of our agencies. I think CCAs um, as a, a statewide institution might be an opportunity to create a financing fund for those low-income individuals. A lot of times their money is sitting in the bank only gathering a percent or less. And if they did the financing, it would be able to um, bring multiple goals together, right? Get more low income individuals into the EVs. So just for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mayor. Uh, Carl. Yes, thank you. Uh, so Richard, uh, when you're looking at charging and stations, uh, are you also considering uh, fuel cell hydrogen um, fueling as well, or is it simply electric charging? Um, we're considering, we recognize that we're sort of um, behind the curve with respect to hydrogen fueling. Uh, we would like to get um, some stations situated in the area. Uh, that is, presents even a bigger problem than uh, EV charging stations because you're essentially stall, stalling a potential bomb next to uh, residential or commercial applications. Uh, so land use is a really important consideration when you're talking about installing uh, fuel tanks that are storing hydrogen gas. So um, we recognize though that we have to bridge the gap between Southern and Northern California. And this is the place where that can occur. I may have some uh, folks for you to chat with. Let's let's talk more. Yeah, let's do. Okay, we, we, we love the partnership and I see some uh, potential partnerships coming with uh, Carl and Richard. Thank you. Any other uh, board members with questions from uh, Air, Air Board? Okay, seeing none, let's uh, move on to item 10. Uh, staff? I don't think we have anything to report on uh, uh, travel by uh, TMC board members at this point in time. Okay, great. Let's move to your uh, executive uh, summary report. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first thing I wanted to report was that um, as of December 31st, um, all of our cities and the county turned in their Measure X audits. And um, that's the first time in our, our three year history that that's happened, everybody's submitting on time. So many kudos and thank you to all of you who uh, helped to make that happen. Um, we, we did hold our first meeting with the Measure X Audit Subcommittee, and uh, there were a couple of issues that were identified with some of the audits. Um, one related to eligibility for, for what was in their capital improvement program, um, one related to some uh, before and after documentation, and um, one related to maintenance of effort, um, which is probably something that we're gonna have to be dealing with um, at the state level uh, because everyone has maintenance of effort requirements for the state level as well. So we'll have more information on that for you, uh, hopefully in February, but we're very pleased that uh, everybody's got their, their audit in on time. Um, second thing I wanna let you know is that actually um, at lunchtime today, there will also be an American Public Works Association Monterey Bay Chapter Awards ceremony. 
and uh, the uh, County of Monterey, uh, City of Gonzales, uh, uh, Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authorities, um, Gloria Road Project will also be honored there, um, as well as Senator Monning, who we honored in December. So that that's a, a great way to recognize our, our partners and the work they've done. Um, and then finally, I do want to um, let um, uh, board member Sabo know that we will talk, uh, we'll talk to staff a little bit about um, what kind of role TAMC could play in this urban air mobility issue. Um, I think that what we found in the past is having a, a patchwork of different arrangements across the cities is, um, is difficult for the for mobility and would certainly apply to this sort of mobility as well. And so we'll take a closer look at that and um, see what kind of ideas and resources we can bring to together to uh, have a consistent uh, system throughout the county. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, great. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, we're moving into the final item, uh, which is the invitation for announcements, the comments from transportation board members, and also for any future additions to a future agenda items. So any, uh, any comments? Uh, Mayor Labar. Uh, yes, I uh, just wanted to first congratulate you, Chair, on becoming Chair. I wanted to thank past chair Alejo for his representation of our board. I felt that he did a really good job and then express my thanks to this board of allowing me to move up to second vice chair. I appreciate the opportunity to work on your behalf at that level. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Debbie, I see your hand is raised. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. I, I uh, just wanted to ask Mayor Rios. I know that you've had um, uh, some sound issues, and I just wanted to uh, have you check in with Eloise um, at the end of the meeting, maybe, and, and uh, confirm whether you had voted on any of the items um, uh, since um, we know you're there, and um, and sounds like there's some sound issues. So that's it. Great. Well, we look forward to hearing from uh, Jose in the, in the coming meetings once we get the sound solved. Okay, I see no other hands raised. Uh, that concludes our business for the day. Uh, Debbie, anything else before we close the meeting? No, thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Happy New Year, all. Happy New Year. <laughs>